Welcome to Commander Pop Culture, a place to gather magical information with some laughs, might I add. Hello everyone, welcome to day two of Fallout Spoilers. We're just gonna get started. Land, Junk Town, tap for colors, comes in on taps, and then for five, you could sack it to create three Junk Tokens. If you got nothing else better to do, it's like, why not? And you get to see three cards off the top of your library with an impulse effect. Mr. Gutsy, whenever you cast an aura or equipment spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. When it dies, create X Junk Tokens or X number of plus one, plus one counters on it. I love Junk Tokens. I like you a lot. Uh, that'll probably be my new favorite thing to abuse in magic. Personally, I value them more than I value treasures because card advantage is king. Man is mana and it is only useful if you have cards suspended on, but cards always have an infinite amount of possibility. I hope we see more junk tokens in the future beyond Fallout because I think they're that great. Agility Bobblehead, we haven't seen this one. Up to X target creatures you control, each gain haste until end of turn, it can't be blocked this turn. Except by creatures with haste, the evasion I like a lot on this one. All the activated abilities of the Bobbleheads we've seen so far are actually quite significant. I think the trade-off of it being like a clunky mana rock, uh, it almost could be overlooked. Armory Paladin, Trample, whenever you cast an aura or an equipment spell, exile the top card of your library, and you play that card until end of turn. I can't get enough of impulse cards, especially if it's on a body, because then it does a little bit more. You're less vulnerable, it has a great stat block too, so it kind of stuffs out a lot of like aggro in the early to mid game, and it gives you more advantage. Uh, what's not the love about Armory Paladin? I mean, Boros is already playing a bunch of auras and equipment, so it's like an auto clue, I think, in those decks. Super Mutant Scavenger. 5-5 five, five for 5, Trample. When it enters or dies, return up to one target or equipment from your graveyard to your hand. Okay. Not bad value. It kind of reminds me of the uh, the 6-drop Tree Folk that kind of does the same thing. Only difference is the Tree Folk exile itself, and you can choose any card. This is a little more narrow, but it's also cheaper. If you're playing, like, somewhere around 30 ores and equipments, then it's like, why not? I like recovery options, especially when it's on a body when you... Uh, might run out of creatures to threaten people with. You want density in your creature package, and this fits there quite nicely. Yeah, <laughs> there's an old lady beating someone with a rolling pin. There's a lot of like unassuming characters that are uh, evil that you never realize are evil. This is one of them. Breakdown: Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Create a junk token. The only thing it's got really going for it is the junk token and that it's at instant speed. But because it's three mana, um, I kind of just pass over this kind of stuff. I want my removal spells to be efficient in costs at max. If I'm gonna destroy a permanent, I'm gonna pay two mana to do it. If I go beyond that, I'm looking for density. So like, I'm willing to pay two mana again on the same spell to blow up two permanents. Wear and Tear, I get to do that for three mana. So that's why I particularly like Wear and Tear. This for three mana only lets you take away one thing. Um, but you can make the argument that's worth it because uh, of the junk token. Depends on what you value more. It's okay density. I guess I'm a little greedy in what I want. Greed is right. Greed works. Big Horner Rancher. Two five for five. Vigilance. Add a green equal to the greatest part when creatures you control. You can sack it to gain life equal to the greatest toughness on the other creatures control. I do love these kinds of uh, scaling mana door creatures. Certain decks want them. I haven't had a deck in a while that wanted these kinds of effects, but I mean, if you make big dumb creatures or you're playing Voltron kind of stuff, this could just turn out a bunch of green mana. And I like that as Vigilance, so it lets you be aggressive and you could get some chip damage in on someone else. And even after you tap him, you could still sack him in response to like a board wipe or removal to gain a bunch of life. Duchess Wayward Tavern Keep. Whenever a creature you control deals damage to a player, put a quest counter on it. For one mana, you get to remove a quest counter to create a junk token. I think what I could get behind in this card is that it triggers for every creature that makes connection. So like if you're a token deck, you could just make an insane amount of quest counters. And like most aggro decks, they run out of cards real fast. Giving you a mana sink for, with these quests and then making a bunch of card advantage pieces with junk tokens um, is quite nice. I could see myself making room for an aggro deck and, and or tokens with this duchess here. Crimson Caravaneer. Dull Strike Trample. When it deals damage to a player, create a junk token. All right, I like that. All that junk inside your trunk. Because it has double strike, ideally you'll make 
two jump tokens, and it has trample too, so if you Voltron this up, you'll have some kind of form of evasion to guarantee that you hit someone twice and get what you want. Good keywords for a creature like this, you just need to build off of it a little bit. Acquired Mutation. It's a goad aura. Whenever enchanted creature attacks, defending player gets two rag counters. I love it. <laughs> I love this card a lot. The impetus cards, I don't normally play. But like lately, I feel like Wizards has been like upping their game and making them more playable and garnering more interest in playing them. Like the last couple have been really good. The one from Doctor Who was really good. The one from Commander Masters was really good. Uh, I hope they keep this trend up because, you know, giving a stat increase and in goading wasn't really enough. And a lot of those impetus cards didn't see any love. Now we're getting more reasons to give him a shot. And uh, I could appreciate that. Pre-war formal wear. Engine's Battlefield return target creature card with man value three or less from your graveyard of the battlefield a creature gets plus two plus two in vigilance i love these kinds of effects uh white is particularly known for like having the stipulation of three or less but uh the more competitive of a player you are that's probably at the top of your curve almost um it probably will hit anything you could possibly need for me my decks uh construction average the cmc is around two pretty consistently even on a budget. If I was playing Voltron and I needed a body, I could see myself playing this and I particularly value the keyword of Vigilance and Lifelink a lot because it lets you play aggressively without sacrificing any defense. Elder Arthur Maxon, creature tokens control have training, uh, sack another creature, it gains Instructable to the turn. So training, if you didn't know, whenever a creature token control attacks with another creature with creative power, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Since Maxon has four power, it's likely that it will have greater power than most tokens that you typically generate. It's cool. If you consistently make a lot of tokens, your opponents will probably have a hard time dealing with this. <laughs> and they scale up because no one wants to trade their cards with tokens because they're not actual cards you want if you're going to be trading you want to trade one for one and trading with tokens feels pretty rough and that's what this guy's going to force people to do i think craig boone novak guard reach and lifelink three three for three one from my baby whenever you attack with two or more creatures put two quest counters on craig when you do craig deals damage equals the number of quest counters on it up to one target creature unless that controller wants to have that damage dealt to them instead it's not combat damage if you're thinking that you can deal lethal commander damage it doesn't work like that you could rack up counters pretty quick with this like if you're doing extra combats the possibility of people really contemplating losing a creature or taking a ton of damage gets real 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 fast helen elizabeth taggarty whenever it and at least two other creatures attack draw a card when you may put a creature with mana value x or less from your hand on the battlefield tapped and attacking where x is taggarty's power i don't know why i love saying the word taggarty makes me think of uh taggarty weed from taggarty farms <laughs> i know that they're uh spelled different but it just feels very synonymous with my mind i can't help it <laughs> it's an okay value piece i don't think it's all that crazy at least it's a draw effect so you get to keep the gas flowing with a very aggro strategy that's probably the best part about this it's not necessarily cheating stuff into play that's great it's the seeing another card from a stick if you can play uh, 30 creatures that all have some form of card advantage on them, that must be a good feeling. There might be enough creatures and magics today where you might be able to pull it off. So this kind of makes you like want to theory craft a little bit and see if it's possible, I guess you could say. I'm quite curious. Vigor's getting a reprint as Fog Crawler. I haven't been able to feature it on my channel because it's been expensive. So yeah, it's a $10 card. Normally when I build uh, decks, I build them on a budget of $5 or less per card. My deck prices typically come out between anywhere of like 80 to $150, even with my cap being at five bucks. I don't think it will influence this enough. I think it's only gonna be getting this special treatment. Vault 75, middle school. First chapter, you get to exile all creatures power four or greater. And then chapters two and three, you get to put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. So you dodge the board wipe on the first third, and then you scale everything up probably past four power on the... <laughs> on the second and third chapters. I like the design on that. Kellogg, Dangerous Mind. 
First strike in haste, 3 2. When it attacks, create a treasure token, and then get the sack 5 treasures to gain control of a target creature for as long as you control Kellogg. That feels kind of steep to steal something and then not be able to keep it based on if this is in play or not. Um, considering that this is like one of the main antagonists from Fallout 4, I feel like this card's a little disappointing. I don't know, you let me know uh, in the comments below how you feel about this card. At the very least, it has haste and it's difficult to block because it has first strike. So those are like the, the two positives that come coming from this. You'll be making treasures probably the turn you play it. Eddie, Lonesome Eyebot. Whenever it attacks, if the number of tag creatures is greater than the number of quest counters on Eddie, put a quest counter on it. And then for two mana, you could sack at the draw card, then draw additional for each quest counter on Eddie. Considering that there's a lot of ways to manipulate counters on things with proliferate you might be able to get away with not pursuing the combat trigger you just get one on it and then you'll have zero the turn you play it you'll only have to tackle this once and then the ball gets rolling from there a nice proliferate target that refills your hand strength bobblehead this one has the activated ability to put x counters on target creature where x is the number of bobbleheads you control makes sense because it's, it's all about strength luck roll x six-sided die where x is the number of bobbleheads you control create a tap treasure token for each even result if you roll exactly six seven times you win you get to ask yourself one question do i feel lucky <laughs> i do like this card a lot yeah if you're looking to be rolling a lot of dice the activated ability is quite cheap which i can appreciate and if you're doing the bobblehead thing um they at least feed into each other and you know you could, helps you play more bobbleheads and i like that they chose dice because both rolling dice and flipping coins is a luck thing it fits it quite nicely mysterious stranger enters the battlefield for each graveyard with an instant or sorcery in it exile target instant or sorcery from that graveyard if two or more cards are exiled this way, choose one of them at random and copy it. You may cast a copy of it, paying its cost. It's a bummer that the copy is random, because like I really like Dire Fleet Daredevil. It's something I slot in like most of my red decks. I just don't like that it's random, so you don't know what you're going to be getting. Because if you want to get the trigger, you have to at least exile two things. If one's ideal and one's not, it doesn't feel good if you hit the unideal thing. Um, a little too conditional, but... I think that's the trade-off because you get to cast a spell for free uh, or copy it for free. It's a very balanced card, maybe a little too balanced. It might not see play because of how balanced it is. I I'm at least willing to give it a try because you'll probably trade with something. It has flash, so you get to play it in combat, steal something, and hopefully get a removal spell to take away something else. Charisma. This one makes 1-1 one -one soldiers based on bobbleheads. I like that because charisma is all about bringing people your way. Making 1-1 one -one tokens makes perfect sense. Endurance, up to X target creatures you control get plus one plus so and gain indestructible to the end of turn. Rex, the number of bobbleheads. I like this. Again, flavorful. Keeping your stuff alive is important, especially if you're in a creature deck. Rose the Cutthroat Raider. At the end of combat on your turn, if you attack this turn, create a junk token for each opponent you attack. Whenever you sack a junk, you get to add a red too. Ooh, it feeds in nicely the junk tokens because uh, you only have till end of turn to play the spell that you exile with the junk token. Adding mana uh, makes it a little easier to you know, not let anything go to waste. So I appreciate that. And it's hard to trade with because of the first strike. Overseer of the Vault, whenever it enters or another creature, and then you put quest counters on this. At the start of combat on your turn, you remove three quest counters from a permanent to control. If you do, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature control, and then they gain Vigilance the of turn. Well, you already know how I feel about Vigilance the Lifelink, and then it also sizes up your board. Aridash the Founder has enlist Whenever a creature control attacks, if it enlisted a creature this combat, the creature that attacked gains double strike until end of turn. If a creature's power is four or more, you get to draw. Just a weird little, I don't know, value card. It's not great. I don't know if I'll be making room for a card like this since uh, it feels like my slots on a lot of my decks are more and more crowded with each passing set. I feel like this will be sitting in my collection for a long time before I find it's a niche place to play. Vault House Gambit. Discard a card, then draw in the first two chapters. And then in chapter three, you reveal five nonline cards from your hand. For each of those cards that has the same mana value, create a treasure token. Kind of like poker, you're trading cards. Cast Hand of Vengeance. Whenever 
it or another creature dies if it's enchanted or equipped return any number of aura cards that are attached to it from your graveyard to the battlefield attached target creature then attach any number of equipment that are attached to it to that creature oh god <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like that angel from Dominaria. It lets you just move things around to avoid costs. Auras, it's more significant because in normal stances, if a creature died with a bunch of auras on it, the auras die too. The fact that you get the segue equip costs as well and dodge that downside of equipment, it's also nice. It's also, um, I think, cheaper than the angel. I think the angel is five mana. Megaton's Fate. For six mana, you get to destroy a target artifact, create four treasure tokens. And then its detonate ability, you get to deal eight damage to each creature. Each player gets four rad counters. Excellent. Um, in Fallout 3, I always detonated. Now that is beautiful. <laughs> I'm a terrible person, but I don't know. You don't get to see a, a massive scale explosion in video games that often. Between Fallout 3 and Tina's Wonderland from, you know, the Borderlands spinoff, I've never seen an explosion as big as either of them. In my case, I guess not so cool guys look at explosions. <laughs> that brings us to the end of today's spoilers. I hope you enjoyed. If you stayed this long, subscribe. So I'm gonna be covering the whole set. I also do a lot of stuff outside of just spoilers. You heard me talk about building budget lists and featuring them on the channel. I feature them on Moto. Unfortunately, I won't be able to feature the Fallout cards. They won't be added. And it's like that because Wizards of the Coast actually no longer owns Modo, it's owned by Daybreak Games. So every time Wizards obtains IPs, Daybreak Games has to acquire it themselves too. So it's particularly difficult in universes beyond. I imagine very expensive to obtain IPs like Fallout. Sometimes they can, sometimes they can't. Um, the profit margins and like the revenue stream with Moto is significantly different than what Wasi gets to work with in paper. Paper is the most popular way of playing the game. They could also ask for more money of it because it's a it's a tangible product that you could hold in your hand. That's why I can't feature it. Maybe I'll build decks um, for all of you to maybe inspire folks to build. But everyone take care now. Have a great night. Bye.